How many tornadoes does the United States average per year? Around 800. Meteorologists with the Storm Prediction Center in Norman, Oklahoma, issue these maps all year round. And each color represents a higher level of confidence of severe weather chances on a scale of one to five. One being the lowest and five being the highest. Well, these categorical outlooks measure a percentage of risk factor across the United States. That includes tornado, hail and wind probabilities. And we see a few of them here in our region. But how often do we see these factors play out? Understanding the weather in your region also means being aware of what risks come along with it. Tornadoes can happen at any given time of the year. Late February, May, and November have been prime months to see higher probability of seeing a tornado here at home. You can, you can definitely have a tornado in the middle of summer. Uh, you can have damaging winds in spring. Yeah, there, there's no recipe necessarily. John Hart is a lead forecaster with the Storm Prediction Center. Originally from Mount Vernon, Illinois, where the weather changes rapidly, Hart knows a thing or two about taking all risk factors seriously. Hart experienced the Marion, Illinois tornado in May of 1982. In February 2012, he issued the tornado watch the day Harrisburg, Illinois, was hit by a powerful EF4 tornado. Tornadoes are, are kind of the, the tip of the spear in terms of severe weather, and it's the worst kind, but... Uh, whether it be damaging winds, localized flash flooding or river flooding, uh, or even very large hail events, which we don't see as much of in Illinois, but uh, every once in a while there'll be a, a big hail storm. Uh, they all cause a lot of trouble, and uh, at least at the Storm Prediction Center, we're trying to keep people uh, aware that it's coming. But we have other risks, too. People don't realize the risk of uh, pretty fast-moving water flowing uh, across these roads and People drive into it, but you always saw people trying. You don't think about the risk. You think, oh, it's it's not that bad. Well, every once in a while it gets that bad. And the next thing you know, your car is being swept away and it's a really serious situation. So what causes the most damage? It varies by the magnitude. Flooding causes more death, but wind causes more damage. Here at home, we see more wind and flooding events than we see tornadoes. But that doesn't mean you shouldn't prepare for one. In fact, you should be preparing for all modes of severe weather. Tornadoes spring, wind, summer, and then flooding year-round. Outdoor warning sirens like this one play an important role when it comes to severe weather. They've even been credited to saving countless lives. There is a lot, though, that you may not know when it comes to sirens. It's an unmistakable sound, often one we associate with an impending tornado, but that's not always the case. For many, the risk depends on the sound you hear. For the city of Carbondale, the first is for attacks. So the attack siren is meant for uh, Department of Homeland Security to allow uh, emergency operations coordinators to let people know in case there is an emergent threat. The second and more familiar one inclement weather. So one is tornadoes, obviously, and then anything over, I think it's right around the threshold of 62 miles an hour of wind. So we just want to make sure with that high wind, anything in that type of uh, that wind, that speed can cause damage or kill somebody. Brian Hall, the emergency operations coordinator for the city of Carbondale, says when it comes to severe weather, It all begins in the National Weather Service office with their warning coordination meteorologist, Christine Walgus, who oversees these exact situations. A lot of what we are doing is called mesoanalysis. And so we're trying to figure out what the atmosphere is doing and try to figure out when things are gonna happen, how bad they may be, and making sure that we're messaging that out. Back in Southern Illinois, Orville Rowe, coordinator emergency manager for Jackson County EMA says, although each area receives the same information, the way they respond differs. But typically it's each jurisdiction will set off their own sirens to their whatever their uh, standard operating procedure would be for that. Which is why if you live in Carbondale, a siren may sound for hail and strong winds compared to other towns that choose to only sound for tornadoes. But it's really for those who are outdoors. They were designed a long time ago 
to warn people who were outdoor workers, farmers, or people that worked outdoors to let them know, hey, something's going on. So sirens were never meant for people to be you know, hearing them inside. Which makes having multiple ways to receive alerts even more important. While you shouldn't only rely on the outdoor warning sirens, Carbondale is busy working on making upgrades. These drawings were not correct back 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is we've redone the map to make sure we pick up these coverage area gaps. Mm -hmm. And that's just something we didn't know that we were missing. What is the longest tracking tornado ever recorded? The answer after this break. 